surprised how much of a blessing this has been. The empowerment in this. Louise, group. that's so kind. Oh. It's a blessing. Well, my for surprise me too. is the inner blocks that I didn't even know were blocking me from success. Isn't that, isn't that crazy when you isn't open your that, eyes and somebody can shine a light on what is holding you back? Awesome. What is holding us back for mm-hmm. God's sakes? <laughs> the value, the authenticity. Yeah. That's one thing you're always going to get with us. You show up for a Kathy <laughs> Heller challenge, Kathy and team. We are, we are authentic in the real authentic, not in like the internet trendy authentic. We're just who we are. And we love the eighties and we love oh Swedish God. fish. And that's we what just- she says. We love the eighties. <laughs> I'll clean up my dishes when I get back. Oh, tried. I need to mute people. Guys, feel free to make me a co-host too. If you want some help. Oh yeah. There there's that. Oh, no, no, there you are. My co-host. I just, you got the power. Um, Okay, so we're going to dive in. We are now live. Hello, Facebook. We are live in our private challenge Facebook group. We are here on Zoom. And in one second, we're going to be 360. I'm going to go live right now in on my Instagram feed for all the people who are watching over there. So here we go. We have so many fun things we're going to do today. Who's excited? Hello, everybody. So hello to Instagram. We are also live in our challenge group. And so if you see me looking this way or this way, camera one, camera two, I feel like Wayne and Garth. Don't tell me you don't know that reference. Diddly do, diddly do. Let's go back to Delaware or not. I'm totally dating myself. Yesterday, my husband was going to sign up for a uh, improv class online. That should be interesting. And he goes, they want to know my age. Should I say, I feel so old because he's in his mid forties gulp. And I was like, no, be proud of it. Be proud of it. Do you know how much of this is actually gray hair? You should be proud of the fact that you can still pull this together. That's right. Who wants some of this? This is called 70% gray at this point. That's right. That's why I went blonde. What do you think guys? What do you think? I'm thinking it's better. And I don't want someone to tell me that it's actually like more perfect than it looks like. No. Do you know what boobs look like after you've breastfed three babies? Horrible. My boobs used to be like this. Hello, standing up and tall. Now they Thank are you like for coming. <laughs> balloons that have deflated. I'm dying, Kathy Eller. <laughs> I want to keep it real. This is we work. So keeping it real. This All of not. our gentlemen friend who are here. Thank you for. And I have no discipline. Like I got no, the Invisalign. Don't. I've had it for two years. I haven't even put it in my mouth. My husband's like, what is it? Why can't I'm like, I can't follow through with that. It's too <laughs> much work. Oh, mm-hmm. you wouldn't want me to look too good. Would you, you need it to be just not too good. You're perfect. That's all I came to say. But anyways, thanks for coming, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that session. (laughs) I don't, I just want to say this. I have a bone to pick. I don't want to be friends with the people who are perfect. They annoy me. I don't want to be friends with the person. I have had moments since seasons in my life. Tell me type of one. If you have this friend, don't, don't spend too much time with her. If you have this friend, the one who's like, oh my God, you and your husband are arguing. Ah. I feel so bad. I'm so sorry. We don't do that. We don't. Did you see my newest drop on Facebook? Did you see the pictures? My kids have all the same matching clothes. Oh my God. Our life is amazing. We're amazing. (laughs) It's amazing. Everything is amazing. You know what? (laughs) Bye. You know what? No. I want to be with a friend who's like, is it hard? I know. No, I'm just kidding. But I want to be with a friend who's like, no, it's not amazing because it's called you share your life with human beings. That is not easy on any. Oh, and what about the moms who are like, I just have all these activities for my kids. We like spend hours doing paper mache. And then we go in a, on a, on a nature preserve. We get, we, we walk and we, this, and I'm sitting here thinking like my child has been on in front of a screen today. I I may as well just jump off of a, what's wrong with me? No, 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 no. You have the friend who goes, is your kid breathing? Did they eat today? Yes, 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 yes. I'm so sorry. This whole thing about like needing to judge ourselves 
has got to go. That's why I came on today. Now, let's actually, who wants to talk about business things? You want to? I am obsessed with business. It is fun. I find that it's like a game. And I've said this before, but Angela's laughing at me. That's what we do. We laugh with each other. Um, I think that business and starting your own business, my friends, yeah, let's do that, by the way. Because why would you want to keep investing in someone else's dream? Build your own dreams. Okay. So, and P.S., did you know when you look at the, the system at large that that 97% of human beings work for the 3% of people who said, I have a dream that's worthy of doing it on my own. No, no. Why can't you be part of that 97%? Come on. This is insane. I mean, the 3%. It's not, it's, we got to flip it around. So I think that starting a business is like the best chance any of us have to get out of our own BS. I'm just going to sing it from the hilltops. If you want to level up, level up, level up, level up. If you want to level up, you actually need to meet your resistance and just go for it. And starting a business, you don't get to stay safe and be like, I'm not going live on Instagram. I'm My friend, Ali Kazaza, how many of you know her? Type of one, if you know her, she's a cutie pie. This woman could barely afford tampons. Am I right, Ange? You're right, Kath. No, it's true. You're right, Kath. Take it away. Just back to you. <laughs> she could barely afford tampons. I'm going to be graphic with you. I know people like to pretend. They're like, do you have any feminine product? It's a tampon. Can we not say the word? Is it, oh, my husband goes to the store the other day. What do you need? I'm like, I like hesitate. I'm like, no, I'm going to tell you. I need milk. I need creamer for the coffee. And I need that. No, I can't buy that. It's 2021. <laughs> you can't with your bad self that's already put you know graduated and gotten a law degree you can't walk up and like buy that or do do we pretend that it's not happening what is it by the way with that that's weird too i'm just saying let's normalize the fact that it happens every month you should be grateful that it does okay what i'm trying to say is that my friend ally couldn't afford to buy the tampons and that's when you know that's that's bad because that's something that you need to be be able to do. And so what happened was she sat down one night, she was crying and she's like, no, no, I'm going to start a business. I'm going to do it. Come hell or high water. And she was, a, she was a mother. She had little babies. And so, you know what she, she prides herself on, which she should pride herself on going live while her kid is taking a poop in a public park bathroom. And she's like, I made a decision. I'm going live every single day. I'm going to put myself out there. And then this is where I'm at. This is what's happening. And you know what happened, my friends? More people wanted to come. It's not look at me. Do you think people want the look at me, girl? Hi, look at me. Welcome. How are you? Let me give you some prescriptive advice. Nobody wants that. People want, come with me. Come on, come with me. Let's be honest. Let's be real. Here's what's actually happening. Let's link arms and do it together. That actually feels good. Angela is nodding her head. The two of us both have children, young children. We're both running businesses. We're both trying at the same time to stay sane. Like we're doing all of the things and you don't need to be perfect. Honestly, God sakes, look at me. Do I look like the girl who has it all together? No. And if I ever start to look like that, please check me. DM me and say, you're looking a little polished. Oh, back it up. I don't want that. I really, really don't want that. My team sent me a diva light ring. You know, those light rings that make your, they begged me. Could you just put it on your office? Is so dark out. I resisted for so long. I'm like, I want it to look bad. I don't want to look like those people. True. Something this smells, is a true story. True. Something <laughs> smells too perfect. And I don't trust you all of a sudden. Cause it's not like that. Because did you know, let me tell you something else that you might not know. Did you know that there is nothing in nature that has a straight line? Nothing is straight lines in nature. Everything is edges and this and sideways and back ways. And then we compare ourselves and we're like, I don't have a straight line. I'm messy. It's called being in process. It's called welcome to the human race. Could you just let go of the shame? Could you just welcome it and go, I could go live without knowing exactly what I'm going to do because I'm a human being who cares about reaching my hand through this screen and maybe just maybe making somebody else feel less alone in their crazy life. Cause life is roller coaster. Woo. I mean, the fact that any of us 
have survived this last year and a half is not normal. I remember sitting there, it was April and someone's like, oh no, sorry, it wasn't, yeah, well, it wasn't March, April. And someone was like, I think they're gonna close school. It was March 9th. They're gonna close school for two weeks. And I was like, two weeks is not possible, is not possible. Just kidding. How about over a year? Just kidding. You can't have help in your house because maybe you need to be in a bubble because maybe somebody brings COVID into your house because maybe you need to like guard all the doors, lock the gates. So then we had no nothing, right? Which is what most, a lot of people in this world are like, hi, that's what I've been doing my whole life. Does it mean that we pretend that that's an easy thing to do? No, it's not an easy thing to do. No, it's not an easy thing to do. My husband's like, and then we have to spend all this extra time with, with each other. That also has its own fun little pieces that come up, doesn't it? So what we're going to talk about today is building a business because it is here for you. And when people say to me, no, it's not, it's not here for me. I'm like, that is a beautiful lie that then removes any dream that you have from being possible, but also keeps you, what? Keeps you safe. You're safe. You don't have to put yourself out there. You don't have to get rejected. You don't have to try something. You don't have to have your friends go, look who's thing she's gonna do a thing. Yeah, you're safe. And meanwhile, your soul's like, I kind of know that there's these other people, but gosh, I just want to tell myself the story that Kathy's lucky and she's 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 lucky. She's so lucky. She's a star, but she, <laughs> that song is good. Angela Grease. No, it's, it's not. It's yes, not it is. Kathy. Yes, it is. Did you see Crossroads <laughs> of Britney Spears? That, that was the name of the movie, right? Yeah. I took my grandma to see it. We you liked took your it. Grandma to see Crossroads. <laughs> yeah. I also took my grandma to see Brokeback Mountain. What? And I didn't realize how sexy it was. And then I wanted to crawl under the seat. Yeah. Because I didn't want to watch that. Oh, I also saw Austin Powers one with my father, not knowing that that's a little bit. Mm. And I'm like, oh, no, don't want you here. And I was what, 10 or 11? It was really not pleasant. No. Can we talk about how I think that that screwed up my life? Let's go back. Let's go all the way back, Kath. But yes, Britney mm -hmm. Spears was good in that movie. Anyway, so. I came to say it. I came to tell you. Thank you. What we are saying is you're not lucky. You're brave. Mm -hmm. And you're right. Because all those people who are sitting there with the story of my environment decides I get either lucky cards or unlucky cards. What do they need? They need you to rise up and go, nope, look at me. And if I'm a mess and I'm doing it, you can do it too. My friend, Allison Prince was a teacher, two teachers living in Utah. She's Mormon. She's got a bunch of kids. She's a lovely human with a good heart and going, why are we on food stamps? I'm a good person. I don't get this. <laughs> And one day she looks around her, her house and she's like, I need, literally need more money. I cannot go and fill up the groceries without the money. So she, what did she do? She started selling trash as she calls it. She's like, I had these like naked wooden blocks that my kid put it on eBay. She goes, I couldn't believe it. I made $60 that day. And I went $60 just came out of this. So I started putting things on Etsy and on and on it went. And she wound up creating a multi seven figure business, but not like a leap where it's like, that's not believable. No, one milestone at a time. And you know what I love that she says? She goes, I would pray about it. And thank God, she goes, God would only give me the next tiny step because I would have been overwhelmed if I actually saw five steps in the future. So she would get the next tiny step. And then with that next tiny step, she would get to this next place and then she'd see the next step. The point being that it is all here for you. And Angela, since I'm also on Instagram and I know we're going to go back and forth, I'll just repeat the things that you say, I guess, so that they can hear. Um, so one of the things we were talking today, Angie and I, about what are the kinds of, what are the kinds of things we want to go over today? Angela says, Kath, remind them of that question about your 80 year old self. Would you like to say it? And then I'll repeat it. Or you just want me to say it. You can do anything you want. It probably makes more sense for you to just say it. Since, okay, I didn't uh, want you to feel left it. out just because now I have this I don't other feel left here. out. I am fully entertained. She's, she's fully happy. entertained. I'm good. So here's what I want you to do if you're not driving, which by the way, if you're driving and watching me on Instagram, don't do that. 
Um, so hopefully you're not driving. And if you're not driving, I want you to take out a pen and paper, go find it. Look at mine. Look at mine. Let me talk to you about what it means to be a hot mess. Do you know how many pens I have purchased for my office? I have integrity. I have, I have dignity. I've purchased pens and pencils, not one of which is still in my office because I have three children who come in and take every single thing I have. So before we went live, I had to go find something and I found this, but it's better than the other day when all I found was half of a purple crayon, only half of a purple crayon. That's all I could find to go into my office. But it's, it's actually ridiculous that this is, but it, I, it, I'll make do with it. So here I am with this pen. Don't know where it came from, but all my awesome pens, even the one my husband like had in, in what's it not in called engrossed, embalmed, a monogram, whatever you call it, that's gone too. It's actually ridiculous that this- Oh is no, what's happening? There's sounds, sounds and it. wonders. Okay, so what I want you to do is take a pen and I want you to do something. I want you to write a letter to you from 80 year old you, eight zero. God willing, we live longer than that, but we're 80. That's the journal that we're doing, the journal prompt. You're 80 years old, engraved. Thank you, Misty. She's like, it's called engraved. I couldn't, it couldn't, that's, I'm 41. It doesn't come that fast. I'm like, what's the word? What's happening? So I want you to write it down. 80 year old you is writing you a letter. What does she say to you? What does she want you to know now? What does she want to tell you that she's so proud that you did? What does she want you to know that she's so grateful that you did this so that she is where she is right now, feeling that she lived the life that she wanted to live, that she checked those boxes, that she did those things. What does she say to you? You know, what's, what's crazy, honestly, every time I've done this, it's a little bit dangerous. I literally, I hear my 80 year old self not only telling me to have this courage and, 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 and reach and keep, keep, keep just showing up and being available. But I always hear her say, have another child. You had that other child. And I'm like, when does that end? Cause there's three already. Right. But anyway, that, that does come up in the letter, but I want you to take a second and I want you to write it down. What does she have to say to you? Picture her. She's sitting there drinking her cold iced tea on the front porch in that awesome cozy little swing chair and she's looking out over this beautiful scene and she says to you kathy amber allison who's ever write your own name what is she saying to you what is she saying take a second and then drop it in the chat does she say to you be kinder to yourself does she say to you don't let go of that dream does she say Go be more creative. Let yourself enjoy it. Does she say receive more? Does she say, don't keep putting yourself last? What does she say? What does she say to you? You got this, relax. Travel more, create memories. Stop holding in your shine. I'm reading some of these comments. These are beautiful. What does she say to you? What is she As saying? Everybody's you? thinking about that, Cass. Yes. I want you to remind everybody what's the number one regret? The number one regret of the dying. Angela saying on our Zoom, the number one regret of the dying, what is it? Do you guys know? There's a beautiful, beautiful explanation of this that this nurse did who she worked in hospice care for many years. And she had the, the privilege of speaking with people in their last moments. And she said the number one thing that people would regret is not living life on their terms. And when you actually think about that and you stop being cavalier about it, what are you going to do about that? What are you going to do about that? You know, I was telling Angela earlier that, and I told you also, in another aspect of this, that marriage is hard. I'm just going to use that as an example. It doesn't always have to be that way, but sometimes it is. You've got, honestly, the Jewish tradition says like you marry 
your Ezer Connecto, which means your help made against you, which means you marry the person who actually helps you become your best self. So it's kind of like you meet your match and you got to like learn where your stuff is. And it actually can be beautiful that it's hard sometimes, right? Because somebody is helping you see yourself into life. In any case, there are moments where it's hard. And I was telling my team earlier that my husband and I have had a few of those moments where I thought like, that's the end of the story. And that's the end. And I remember going to a therapist once who really helped us. Like we had gone to other therapists who were like, mm, it kind of felt like a little bit maybe got worse or maybe it was a waste or maybe it was whatever, just platitudes. This guy really helped us. And, and a few weeks after that we had started having, having this like shift, I was talking to another friend. Her name is, God forbid, no. But this girl, let's call her, let's call her Susie. Susie says to me, I'm going through a really hard time. And I didn't say to her, well, maybe you should call this guy. He's a therapist. I said to her, call this guy, call this guy, call this guy, call this guy. And I followed up. Did you call him? Did you call him? Did you call him? She finally called. She finally went. She said, Kath, my husband was able to kick an addiction that has been happening for 11 years. Thank you so much for making sure that I called. And I think that there are moments in life, and this is one of those moments for me. And it's not easy to do what I'm doing. It wasn't easy to tell her that. It feels a little weird. Like I'm telling her, call this person, call this person. Like I'm not a person who wants to sell someone on something. But when, if you had a COVID, what's the word, remedy, wouldn't you be like, take this, take this, take this, take this. Like you would give somebody, if you had the cure to cancer, you wouldn't go, maybe you want to, maybe not. You'd be like, take it, please take it. It will, right, if you had it. Please, God, we should find it. So this is not always easy, but what I'm telling you as clear as day is that by the grace of God, with the help of so many incredible human beings, I started this program a year and a half ago called Made to Do This. And it's not a program. It's a movement. It's literally a movement. We see mostly women, a few good men, but mostly women come together and start to take the kind of action that they've dreamed of taking because the support is at the kind of level where it loves you into life. And so I could come on here and be like, do it, don't do it. And I'm like, I know that some of you won't do it. And some of you won't because somebody else is your person. And I want you to go stick to that person like glue. But for some of you, I am your person and I'm not going to be cavalier. I, we, we close enrollment on Friday and I'm going to be like, no, 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 no. Like I know where you will be in 12 weeks. If you take this kind of action with this kind of support, the transformation is not something I'm going to be like, whatever, it's up to you. It's cool. It's whatever. It's not whatever. It's not whatever. So I want you to ask yourself, what would your life look like? If you woke up every day and did something you loved every day, every single day you did something you loved and you made money doing that, how would that change your life? How would it change the experiences that potentially are coming to you through the course of that experience? Who might you meet? How would it change your life if you started making money doing what you loved? I'm talking an extra 5, 5K a month, an extra 10K a month. If you were starting to make real money doing something that lit you up, how would that change your life? What would you do? How would it be different? What would you, how would your face change? What would you, what would you do to celebrate that? How would it change the way your children feel about what's possible? How would it change your marriage? How would it change who you attract? Write it down. Write it down. How would it change your life? Because there were days where I was making cold calls as a songwriter who had a, who had a gift, has a gift. And I felt so bad reaching out to NBC and people who wound up becoming my clients, like Leo Burnett Advertising Agency and trailer companies. I was like, I feel like such an idiot. I feel like such a burden. I feel scared. I'm also tired. I have a baby. I don't have 
the extra money to just, and my husband kept saying, Kath, you could be a substitute teacher. Then at least you'll know that at the end of the day, you'll make $75. And that's where things were at. And my husband's dad died suddenly when he was a kid and my parents got divorced about that same age in my, my path. So we didn't have that like extra money. Like we didn't have that. And it was just the reality. And my husband's mom who recently passed, may she rest in peace. She was a widow. And so we weren't going to leave LA. We were going to just do what we were going to do, which is live with our kids in a little apartment. Cause that was all we could afford. And that was the truth. And I would shake. I would literally be like, who the hell do I think I am? I'm cold, cold calling a broadcast producer to say, hi, I write music. Oh my God. Like I felt like Ellie Kemper in the office. I felt like, oh, hi, hi, hi. I don't know how to like do this. This is scary. You know? And I would call and then people would sometimes be rude to me. Of course they would be. They don't know me. I'm bothering them all this stuff until I was like, wait a second. Am I really going to let this fear right now stand on the other side? Cause what if I actually could, what if I got one song in an ad? What if I got one song in one commercial? How could that actually change our life drastically? It could drastically change our life. And I remember thinking I, I had a social worker therapist at the time. That's what I could afford. And she was actually great. I remember her saying to me, I don't care if the money you make just covers you having 10 hours a week to yourself. It's worth it. You need that time. And I was like, yeah, because I don't have money to have help. And I used to think, I know I need this because my mom, God bless her, she sacrificed all of her mental health and well being because that's just the decision and the agreement that was made between her and my dad, who they eventually broke up. And she lost herself and her gifts were dying inside of her. And I was like, I know what that story leads to. I'm not doing that. And I do want my, my husband kept saying, I grew up in an apartment. You grew up in an apartment. So we'll raise the kids in an apartment. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I was like, it is fine. But why can't we have more? Why can't they have a backyard? Why can't they learn to ride a bike? My husband never learned to ride a bike. He never learned to swim. They didn't have that as an option. It gets me emotional. I said, why shouldn't they have both? Why can't they be a nice person who also has to go well, actually, I want them to be really nice. So if they have too much, maybe they won't be nice. I said, they will be nice. That is not mutually exclusive. And so I used to sit there and be like, I'm calling again. I'm calling again. And I eventually made a relationship with a couple people who worked at these places. And eventually I figured out how to actually do business, which is about empathy and listening and asking questions. And eventually they gave me the opportunity to write a song for Target, for Walmart, for Netflix theme songs, for Grey's Anatomy, for Pretty Little Liars. And guess what? Not only did I get to make enough money for us to buy our first house, but I got the satisfaction of getting to do that. I used to drive home from the studio having just recorded a song and I would cry the entire way home and think if this was my last day, that was the best day. That was my best day. I got to be myself. And there's nothing that's better than that. And then when my, my second, I had two at the time, we got on a, we got on a flight and we flew from, we flew from LA to South Florida to see my, my parents and on the TV screens, every screen, you know, when you can see every screen's the same, my commercial for McDonald's came on and it's like animation. So there's no dialogue. It's just me. And I had just fallen asleep. And my three-year-old goes, mama, that's you. It's you mama. And I took her headphones and I was like, that's so cool. Cut to five years later, it's everywhere. We'd gone on a trip to New York city. We were able to stay at the nicest hotel. And now I had three of my girls with me and we went to the American girl store. And what was playing when we walked in, my song was on the radio. My daughter goes, mommy, it's you, it's you, it's you. Then I wrote the theme song to this show, Lama Lama on Netflix. And my little kids who are watching Peppa Pig are also watching Lama Lama. I'm like, mommy, that's you. And I get to look at them and go, so what do you want to do? Because it's you too. What does it look like?
And during COVID, it was the biggest blessing that my kids were not in school. Because I said, you know what? School teaches you what to think. It doesn't teach you how to think. You don't need to memorize answers that somebody else tells you. You're going to find your own answer. My husband just sent me a link to an article that just came out. And I, I texted him back, jealous, I, with an exclamation, because Jimmy Iovine and Dr. Dre are starting a high school in South LA to teach kids what it really means to be creative and innovative and start their own business, their own dreams. You know why? They both hated high school. And the reason why I do made to do this is to come and collect all of the people who have a tremendous amount of talent and have decided based on a lie that they've believed that there is no room for them. It wouldn't happen. It's not possible. And oh, here's the kicker. Even if it was possible, you are not enough. You're not talented enough. You're not hot enough, thin enough, sexy enough. You don't have the right connections. You don't have the right money. You don't come from the right, right place. That's BS. Because the only thing that makes human beings actually move from here to here has nothing to do with that. It's connection. It's connection and opening your heart. And when you open your heart and you make connections with people, you will find the gifts inside of you that that other person needs. And those things will start to move you forward. And so in Made to Do This, we help you figure out what are your gifts. And people go, I would love to do it, but I don't have a thing. Well, I'm certain that you do. You probably have six things. And they're all really about you finding things that are so natural to you and making someone else's day better because those gifts are put in the world. And for some people that's knitting sweaters. And for some people it's creating a membership. And for some people it's like this girl staring at me right now, who's going to make me cry. Whose real gift is helping me with my mission. And she always says, you know, I never really knew what my thing was because I don't say to God, put me first, shine a light on my face, but I just want to be a helper. And I want to find people who have an incredible, true message and help them do it. And if it wasn't for you over these last two years, then I wouldn't be helping as many people as I help because of you. And that started from her just continuously and consistently saying yes to however she could help somebody else, even if she was literally standing in line at Walmart. And at the time she was a, she was a director of a preschool and the woman in front of her was like, oh, it's a long line. Who are you? What do you do? And the woman, the woman was like, I run, a, I'm a paralegal and I'm so stressed. I don't have any organization right now. And I'm trying to message back these people. And Angela was like, I can help you with that. And she's like, I'll just come and help you. Next thing you know, the woman's like, you're a really nice human being. Can I pay you to do this? She was like, sure. What's your rate? She's like, here's my rate. And just kept making it up until she led herself to me. And she's like, Kathy Heller, I just looked at all your stuff. I know I could help you. And I'm like, Angela, have you ever run a multi eight figure bid? She's like, we can do it. I see your message. And I kept saying, look at her. She'd be like, oh my God, do you know what I can see? Do you know what we can do? And I'm like, really? You think we can, we can, she's like, yeah, you can reach 5,000 more people, hundred thousand more people. We can do it because it's this, this, and this. And together we were scrappy and we've just helped so many people. And we are just the girl next door, aren't we? That's really what it is. So I'm so grateful because I've met so many incredible people too, through having this podcast and through starting courses. And I can tell you that all of my friends, whether it's Amy Purdy or Susie Moore or Allison Bird or Nicole Walters, all of my friends who are the ones actually DMing me in the night when I'm freaking out or they're freaking out, the cost of admission to that club is just courage. None of us have the same skin color, religion, bank account, background, but courage, courage is there. A lot of courage and a lot of empathy. And the empathy starts with yourself. It starts with you having empathy for yourself. 
you know, we were doing, I started out selling my, I started out selling my um, music and it was amazing. And I got to be an artist for a decade. And then I started to teach songwriters online how they could get into the music business. Now, the last time I checked the songwriting population in the world, uh, those are not the people that people go, oh, you wanna really meet a lot of people who have a lot of cash? Talk to struggling songwriters, like struggling songwriters, they're not known for rolling in the dough. And still somehow I was able to not only turn that songwriting business into a $2 million a year business, but a significant amount of the people who took that class were able to create a multi six figure business for themselves licensing music. One of the times that I was launching that program, there was a person who was listening and he wanted to do the program, but he couldn't figure out how he would come up with $300 a month. And so he had talked to his wife and the decision sadly was, this isn't possible. We have four kids. He was going to school and working and taking care of the kids. And he was like, we just literally can't do it. We literally can't do it. We literally can't do it. And he went to church on Sunday and Angela, tell me what the line was. You told it to me today. What was it that the pastor said? And he heard it. So the pastor literally during the sermon, he's sitting there, you know, this guy sitting there with his wife and they had just literally said, this is so cool. Kathy is my person. This is the, this is the right move for us, but we're not going to do it. We just can't afford it. We've got to, we've got four kids. Like we can't do this. This is not make financial sense. And so they're secure in their decision. They go to church. And suddenly during the sermon, the pastor looks over the congregation and he says, somebody sitting in this audience today is closing a door that God is trying to open for you. And you need to walk through that door. And him and his wife looked at each other like, what is, is he talking? Is he talking to us? Like, <laughs> I'm going to repeat what you just said for people on Instagram. She said, and, and he told us this story. His name is Nick. I'll go that far. He, and he tells this story publicly, but he tells name, it all the time. <laughs> he's, he's, an, he's an incredible human being. Um, and he says, the pastor said, somebody here is closing a door that God is trying to open for you. And he was like, I think he might be talking to me. And he signed up for the program. But here's the thing. He still didn't know magically through the pastor's words, what in, what in the earth he would do to actually come up with the $300. So he goes home that night and he says to his wife, okay, $300, what am I going to do about these $300? And they make a decision that he is going to drive for Postmates, for Instacart, be, be part of that and dedicate a certain amount of hours, three nights a week to doing that, to come up with the $300 a month. But here's the next hurdle. They have four kids and they tag team. He's in school and working, then she's in school and working and nobody has the money to have someone watch the kids. So he says, I'm going to put all four kids in the van. They're coming with me. So three nights a week, he put his kids in the van and he ran those deliveries. He said, we had the best time. And I showed them what you do for your dream. And you guys, what wound up happening is very shortly after that, he got a song of his in a Nordstrom commercial, which was thousands of dollars and also broke the seal. It was sort of like the gateway to then what became his career. However, he said he also did something else. He wanted to make sure he'd make the money. So he didn't just run the deliveries. He went on to Fiverr. You know, there's all these websites right now where you can offer services for people. And he did something that nobody had done that he had seen. He just thought the thought, Hi, do you have a business? Would you like me to write a jingle for your business? Sure enough, he gets a message from a dentist. Sure, I, I know you write hip hop stuff. That might be cool, actually. Write me a jingle. And he's like, how much is it? He's like, $250 to give a guy a song. By the way, that's very cheap. When people license music online, it could be $500, $1,000. It could be $50,000, right? All of the things. He goes, Kath, it actually turned into like a real thing. Like I started making thousands of dollars a month writing jingles for people, which was like easy and great practice for me. And people were so happy with these songs and they could say this, it was written by an indie artist and da, 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 da. He goes, I wouldn't have done any of that had I not done the program. But what was better than that is that his children got the message. They got the message. 
you don't say no, you say how. You don't say no, you get resourceful. And as soon as you say how, all of the light bulbs start to turn on. Another and I just want to support ahead. that in saying, you don't have to be the expert to go do these things. Nick was not this like, I'm the most well-known person. I know everything oh about God. music and production and all the things. And I write the best-selling jingles. He was available. He was available. And that's what we all need to be. People don't want experts. They want people who are available to raise their hand, to solve the problem. You don't have to be the best artist in the world or the most experienced speaker in the world or whatever those things are that you can do. You just have to raise your hand. You just have to get in action. And that is when you're gonna see the rewards. That is when you're gonna find clarity and figure out these things. You don't have to have the answer. You don't have to be the expert. You just have to be available. And the question is, I want those of you who are watching on Instagram and those of you who are here in this group, what comes up? What comes up as Byron Katie says, Byron Katie does this thing called the work. We were talking about it today. And I said, she's just such a baller. Like she, she just has these four questions and she goes over them and over them and over them. Right. Um, and her story is that she was like living literally <clears throat> in a halfway house at one point laying on the ground and a cockroach crawled over her and she went, into the bathroom, looked at herself in the mirror and said, what, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? And started to change her life and turn things around and started to question these beliefs that were keeping her literally so frozen and so sick. And so the work that she does has helped so many people. Of course, Oprah loves her and, and all the others, right? They love her. She's just as real as it gets. And she'll say to you, what's the belief that this all comes back to? Because it's, it's getting in the way. And the question to ask is like, is it true? When you say like, it's not possible. I don't have any talent. I don't think it's, I think the world is scarce. I don't think there are people out there who would pay me for what I love. I don't think that I could ever do. Is it true? How do you, how do you know for certain that that thought is true? And then all of a sudden you'll be like, mm, I don't know if I know for certain, but I'm pretty sure it's true. And then the next thought is, how do you feel when you think that? Who would you be without that thought? And how do you turn that around? And quite often, as every psychology major will tell you, when you say it's not possible and nobody would buy it and da 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 da, you're really talking about yourself. I don't buy it. I don't believe in myself. I don't think that it's possible, right? You're talking about ourself. When we say, I can't, or it's not there. It's, I'm not willing to believe that I'm worthy of receiving that. That's really what's at the bottom of it. People live the lives they feel worthy of. That's just how it goes. I've noticed, like I mentioned my marriage before, I've noticed there are times in my marriage with, with, when without saying anything, if I'm just in a certain place, he just interacts with me in a different way. I've noticed that when I come in to talk to my kids, if I'm not ready and available to negotiate with them on something, but I'm just certain that this is what it's going to be. Like we're going to bed or we're putting the iPads down, but I'm like done and certain they just go, okay. But if I'm like feeling guilty and unsure and I go, I don't want you to do that. And they, they start to get, well, why they start to litigate da, 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 and I'm like, I'm, I'm out, I'm done. But if I come in and I'm clear and I'm like, this is what it is. I say to people, they're like, well, I'm trying to start a podcast. I'm trying to start a business. I'm, I say, stop saying that. Don't try. Be it. When I started the podcast, I said, I'm starting a podcast. I'm doing this. I didn't say I'm trying to do this because there's no trying. We either are it or we're not. And when we come in with that energy and you show up on Instagram or you're talking to a friend or you're offering your organizing services or you're telling somebody that you, you're willing to do X, Y, and Z, but you just are clear and you're worthy of receiving from that person because you know you're not taking anything from them. You're giving them something. You're giving them something. When that happens, there's an exchange of energy and the person just feels secure and calm. And they're so happy to give that to you. They're so, I just bought today as a, as a gift of a, like a bonus for my team, 
this gorgeous jacket from Zadig and Voltaire, which is one of my favorite brands. It's a $395 jacket to give to every person who's a, a, on a particular spot on my team. And the jacket is this hand-painted, beautiful image on the back of all these women of all different colors and shapes and sizes and hairs, different curly, straight, black, blonde, blue. I mean, it's just the coolest thing. And it says, girl bosses rule the world. And it's just this, and I love this brand. I don't hesitate to spend money on that because that brand sends out the vibration of like, you want to gift yourself with this jacket. Like you want to gift yourself with this jacket and we're happy to help you do that. That's what Louis Vuitton is doing. They're not going, I hope I can convince them to spend all this extra money. No, that's not what they're doing. It's an exchange of energy. So what I want to tell you is that we are closing enrollment for me to do this on Friday. Another thing that's happening in terms of timing is tomorrow night is the last night to get bonuses. There will be a bundle of bonuses that are worth about $8,000 that will be dropped over the next day. You'll see them. They expire tomorrow night and then there are no more bonuses and enrollment ends Friday night. What I can also tell you is if you're on this call right now, Angela's going to pull a special extra bonus for you. And Angie, you can either say it or type it in the chat. And we have about 12 minutes before we get off this call. If you make the decision to show up for yourself in this program and change what you've been choosing and you do it by the time we reach 15 minutes after we got off, which would be for me, 115 EST. If by 115 EST you enroll, you're going to get this. And P.S., anyone who's already enrolled gets every bonus. If you enroll early, that doesn't mean you then don't get everything else. No, you get everything else. So some of you have already gotten bonuses like my podcasting program. You've gotten bonuses like Laura Belgray's email copywriting session. Like I'm, I'm going to be pulling into this program the absolute best human beings that I, I know who have legitimate concrete things to teach you. There's no bro marketing here. There's no like I stand in front of a jet and tell you, you can get rich quick. I don't want that for you. I'm not interested in you getting rich quick. I'm interested in you building a sustainable business where you get to share your light, where you feel you make an impact, where you get to have both. You don't have to make a choice. You get to show up and share your gifts, the God-given things that he asked you to give to this world, that if you don't give them, no one ever will, because it's your gift, your way, your imprint. I want to see you giving your gifts and making a living doing that so that you don't have to put those things aside for later for a rainy day. So I'm going to tell you now what this big bonus is. If you sign up by 115, which is 15 minutes after we end this live, in addition to getting a seat in the program, which is limited space because we do the program live on Zoom, there are no pre-recorded videos. We do not do that. We want you not to get information. We want you to have a transformation. Every other course I ever saw spent a lot of time making sure there were great videos and great content. And then I kept seeing people say, I didn't finish it. I didn't finish it. I didn't finish it. And I said, I don't want a 6% completion rate. So we have a 92% completion rate because we don't focus on the fact that Kathy Heller went off one day and shot beautiful videos. We show up every single week live on Zoom, hold your hand, put you in an implementation call, assign you a mentor, make sure that you are seen, make sure that your homework gets feedback and that by the end of 12 weeks, you actually have an insurance policy that you did it. It's done. So if you sign up for this program by 115, not only do you get that seat in the program, which is kind of like all you need, but you're also going to get the Lightning Lab bonus, Lightning Lab launch bonus, which let me tell you what it is. You've heard people talk about launching. They launch a program. They launch an event. They, everyone launches, by the way. Whether you have a product-based business, whether you have a service-based business, there's always a launch. A coffee shop that opens, what do they have? Opening, grand opening day, right? There's a little bit of a launch. There's a lead up. People know that it's coming. You get flyers in your mailbox. There's a free coupon. Everybody launches. If Pixar is going to put a movie out, I just watched In the Heights. It was great. I saw it on Broadway and it was beautiful. So beautiful, this movie. I didn't hear about it the same day. I knew it was coming. I knew In the Heights was coming, just like I know Evan Hansen is coming in September and I can't wait to see it because I saw it four times on Broadway. There's a launch. There's a launch to everything. 
also online. If people use the online uh, systems like Facebook or Instagram, there's a lead up to launching, whether you're launching your product is, is going live or you're launching a course or you're launching that you can take people into a membership. Most people hate launching. They hate launching because they feel like all of a sudden you have to be fake. All of a sudden you need something like a hundred thousand people on a list. Like you have to turn into this like professional online marketer. We don't launch that way. That's not the way I do my launches. And since I started launching, which was five years ago when I was pregnant with my third daughter, my friend, Laura Belgray likes to say that it should be called don't keep your webinar. I'm not interested in slideshows. I'm not interested in webinars. I'm interested in heart to heart connections with real value being poured from one person into another. So by the end of you giving something, people who don't sign up feel like they got tremendous real value from what you do. We will teach you how to launch the way that I launch from my very first launch when I was just starting out that first launch that first day made $147,000. Every launch since then has been a multi six or seven figure launch. And my friends say to me, that's an anomaly. I don't know how you do it. I say, well, when you, when people zig, you zag, you stay away from things that are contrived and curated, forget all the information, make people feel seen, show up, do this and this and this. We're going to teach you our lightning launch lab program. It's a two day intensive. Angela and I will be doing it together. She has been my launch wing woman. We together have only had multi seven figure launches one after the next, after the next, and have gone on to help thousands of people through these programs to start their own businesses and save their families through COVID. And we feel very proud of all of it. That is a $1,500 two day program, which is only in its beta test. When we actually launch that, we will be charging more like $7,000 and it will be more like maybe four to five days, but we will be teaching you that and giving you a step-by-step -step guide and it will be live, no videos. You will get that if you sign up. I don't know what to tell you, but I'm going to make it really hard for you to not because I care, because I've been at graduations and made to do this and I've heard the stories because I've stood there and seen people say, I'm out of my comfort zone. I'm showing up. I'm shining my light. I have this business. I just made this much money. I'm doing this thing that's so easy. It doesn't feel like a job. It's changed my family around. And that's what I will insist on for all of you. If you want to sign up for Made to Do This, you go to madetodothis.com. Madetodothis.com. If you have any questions, put them now in the chat. If you sign up by 115, you don't just get a spot. You get the Lightning Launch Lab bonus, which is going to be epic. Um, it's going to be at the end of the summer. It's going to be a two and a half day intensive and we cannot wait. So anybody who already signed up, you just, you, you got that as well. I want to also tell you that I will be live every single evening for the rest of this week um, at eight o'clock and I'll be live every day for the rest of this week at noon. So if you want more uh, training, we are going to keep going over what we have done. We are encouraging you to go watch replays of the conversations that we've already had since last Monday. All of those trainings will be up until Friday. If you really want to learn more about marketing, if you want to learn more about how to figure out your gift, watch yesterday's call. Tonight, tonight, I will be giving away winners for those of you who did your homework. And that homework is based on the session Melissa and I did yesterday that is sitting right now at kathyheller.com slash replay. We went over yesterday how to help you figure out what is your thing, how to help you figure out what is your thing and how to give you the first few ideas of how you can chart a course towards being able to make a living from that. In Made to Do This, it is a step-by-step 12-week -step program where you will find your thing and you will start putting out that offer. And when you have that kind of support and that very clear weekly direction and homework, it starts to make a lot of sense. You go, oh, I make this offer. I give this away for free. I get the feedback. I come up with a price. I get a testimonial. I start to be more creative. I start to build content around what I'm doing. I start attracting the right buyer. I start making the right conversations. Every single day, I start growing my social media footprint. I start to make more money. I start validating this offer. You will start to see very quickly and very clearly how that actually turns into a business. Does anyone have any questions? Well, first of all, I'm getting direct messages 
on Zoom because people aren't typing it in the chat. They're, they're sending it to me. I'm in, I'm in, I was on the fence. I'm over the edge, let's go, let's do this. I, so if you see me like happy typing over here, that's what's going on. Um, it's so, so, so excited about it. Um, and one of the questions that I'm getting a lot is like, okay, this is awesome that it's a 12 week program, right? It's great, it's long enough, but short enough, feels really good. But what does it mean to get lifetime access? Because you get lifetime access to every single session. So not only do you get lifetime access, but we also transcribe every single session. So if it's easier to look through the notes, you know, you, you've got that too. You also get a workbook every single week, every single week you have a workbook for that content. So the, our whole point in these 12 weeks is to give you a roadmap that you can rinse and repeat. Like you can rinse and repeat the, the strategies that we're teaching you over these 12 weeks. So when you sign up, you get access to your course portal, which is housed in Thinkific. So it's off of Facebook. It's a completely different thing. And we put every recording, every workbook, every guest expert session, we'll put all your bonuses, everything goes in there. And that never goes away. So when the 12 weeks is over, you still get that forever and ever and ever. So if you're like, oh, I really want an Instagram refresher, um, I'm going to go back in or, hey, I have an idea for a new offer. I'm going to go revisit the beta test week or whatever those things are. Um, you can always, always go back and do it for as long as you want to. We even have people who do the 12 weeks as part of this community. And then they kind of get a band of, of other students together and they're like, let's do it again. And they work through the content again, which is so, so fun. Um, so, so that's how lifetime access works. I'm going to go through. Um, I'll tell you what I'm doing now. I was muting myself so that you could talk and that they yeah, would yeah. have me repeating what you're saying. But what I want everybody here, somebody asked the question, what if I can't make the time? I want people to understand that the way that we made the times of the class, since it's all happening live is choose your own adventure. We have incredible mentors who have worked with me and worked in their own businesses side by side. We all share the same heart and the same kind of spiritual lens in which we see the world. And we all know how to build a multi six figure business. And then some, there's all kinds of creatives in there. The way it works is when you enroll, you get to choose which mentor session you want to be at. And that becomes your session, like a college class for the rest of the time. So if you choose, you're going to be at this session because Wednesdays at 8 PM works best for you. That's your session for the 12 weeks. That becomes your mentor. You're in that small group. You also see me every single week. I come on every single week on zoom with you Mondays at noon Eastern. We work through the content. I give you homework. You can watch the replay if you can't make it. However, 10 of the 12 weeks, because I come in with guest experts to go deeper with Gabby Bernstein, deeper with Ali Webb, I'm going deeper on these topics of how to fundamentally make the shift personally, how to fundamentally make the shift in your business. We will stagger those live sessions so that there will be times where you absolutely can make sure you're at my session. Your mentor session is huge because they're going to piggyback on what I'm teaching you on Mondays take the curriculum that me and Melissa create and make sure that they hold your hand. And so instead of just having a recipe for brownies on your mentor call, you get the brownies made bit by bit. We'll say, we want everyone to go live right now. We want everyone to go put a call to action in your Instagram bio. We want everyone to go message three people, this free offer for your cupcakes, for your first consultation that you're going to give away. You'll go, oh my God, I just did it. Cause you have everybody else on your screen giving you that extra support on my calls, as well as on your mentor calls, you will have moments where you can have your questions answered directly, your spotlights, your moments where you can get your ideas teased out. We also have at the end of the program, it's like a shark tank. It's like a pitch panel where people will get to pitch their ideas in exchange for me giving a select amount of people, a select group, a little bit of a grant money toward a grant seed money towards building their thing. It's really, really fun. Everybody feels so supportive of everybody else. And that's the way it goes. And then you have lifetime access to all of those sessions. And quite frankly, most of the people that come together and made to do this become best friends, no joke. And they repeat a lot of this stuff together. So they keep themselves going. You also get a certification when you do made to do this, which allows you then to join our alumni only membership. Our alumni only membership is a fraction of the cost of made to do this because it's a membership, but I am in there every single month. My team is in there every single month, every single week you have calls and you have specific strategies of things that we're teaching you to do, which builds on made to do this. You can only be a part of that. 
if you go through this program. So there's a lot of reasons why this works. We have a method to the madness. So I love I you I want guys. to piggyback on that, Kath, because I want to let you guys in on a secret, okay? So I- you While got- you do that, I'm going to jump off of Instagram so that sure. when you're speaking, I don't have to translate it. So you do your thing and I'll mute myself. Awesome. Say goodbye to Instagram. Okay. So I want to really, really let you in on a secret here because the truth is, you know, the whole Walmart story and and all of that, and that's a hundred percent a true story, but I would not be where I am right now. I would not be helping Kathy run an eight figure business. I would not have my husband had left his corporate job and him managing online businesses and us working together. I would not be where I was if it wasn't for having people around me to support me, to bounce my ideas off of, to hold me accountable. Um, and spoiler alert, one of those people was, is, and still is to this day, Melissa Camilleri Anisich, who I met in a Facebook group literally that's what happened. And I'm telling you when you have people around you, okay, first of all, type a one in the chat. If you have people in your life who get this, who get this building a business thing, who understand who, who are there to support you type a one. If you do type a two, if you don't have those people, if you're like, nobody really understands type a two, if you're like, meh, don't really have those people around me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's really hard to find people who get it because sometimes you'll find people who get business, but they don't get the heart centered business. They miss the soul part of it. And I'm telling you, that was the difference maker to have a, a sister in business and in life come alongside me and be like, yep, that didn't work. Try this. Maybe this would work. Or if you worded it this way, or, um, Hey, let's, uh, let's go jump on zoom and, and get all of our social media batched out for the month or things like that. You make lifetime relationships. Like the program might be 12 weeks, but the relationships last a lifetime. And I'm telling you, you could Google everything. You could buy every expensive course. You could go get your MBA, but without surrounding yourself with the right people, the implementation isn't there. The accountability isn't there. It just doesn't happen unless you have the right people around you to keep pushing you forward to pick you up when you fall to give you that next idea because Kathy is so right when she says you can only reach for the branches that you can see right but when you have a friend who can give you a boost when you have somebody who gets it who can put their arm around you and help you see what's possible that will get you so much farther than trying to do it on your own totally and Melissa, um, Melissa and you and I were talking earlier today and oh, I'm going to mute. I got it. Okay. And you said, Kathy, tell the third door story, tell the third door story. So I'm going to tell you the story. Cause you always remember the things that, you know, touch people's hearts. The thing is my friend, Alex gets all the credit for this. Cause this is the title of his book. Alex Benayan wrote a book called the third door type of one in the chat. Have you ever heard of it? If you have awesome, if you haven't great book to go pick up. So I'm going to tell you this because I do think that this really feels like where it hits us most in our gut. When Alex was 18, he was at USC and he was pre-med and he comes from Persian immigrants. His parents are from Iran. And he says, as soon as I came out of the womb, they put a stamp that said MD on my butt. My parents were like, he's going to be a doctor. He's going to be a doctor and he didn't want to be a doctor. And he was sitting in his first, it was like finals during freshman year and working so hard, taking all these science classes that he didn't want to take. And he's at the library and his friend is like, why are you not studying? And instead he was Googling, how do I get on the prices right? And his friend's like, if you, if you Google, how do you get on the prices right all night? You're, you're definitely not going to pass these exams and get A's. And he's like, yeah, I know, but I'm so burnt out. I'm so miserable. I don't want to go to med school. I don't want to take these classes. This is not me being myself. I figure if I can get on the prices, right. If I can win, I could take care of myself. My parents say they're going to pay for me if, as long as I'm in college. Well, if I make my own money, I can do what I want. Well, you guys, he got on the prices, right? He won. He cashed out. 
And he did exactly what he said he was going to do. And the story is just so amazing. What wound up happening is he said to himself, well, if I'm going to just kind of do my own thing, I need a guide. I need a Yoda. I need a mentor, someone to tell me how to do what I, what I want to do, not how to go be something I don't want to be. How do I be what I want to be? So he went on a quest to try to meet people like Steven Spielberg, Lady Gaga, Warren Buffett, um, Larry King, Maya Angelou. He wanted to meet these people. He wanted to sit down and ask these people, how did you get to where you are? And so guess what he did? He set out on a quest and each one of those people is a story, how he finally got to meet Maya Angelou, how he finally got to meet Lady Gaga. Like it's just each story is a quest on its own. He wound up compiling all of those interviews into a book called The Third Door. And when he was pitching the book to get a publishing deal, he came up with this title, The Third Door. And they said, well, what is The Third Door? And he said, well, I realized something every time I sat with one of these people, they would tell me about the door that most people walk through. The door where most people actually never get to the door because they're standing in line waiting. And so I started to listen and listen better and better until I realized every person that I met actually found the third door, the way in that nobody actually talks about or sees. And he says, here's what I mean. He goes, Kathy, have you ever seen a nightclub? And I said, yeah, I can remember moving to LA and the Sky Bar at the Mondrian was always like the coolest place. And I remember personally being 24 years old in line at the Sky Bar on this long line, you're freezing because you know how we do it, us girls. We wear clothes, there's no sleeves, it's cold. And don't give me that. I know you live in Maine, Angie. It gets cold in LA sometimes, okay? It gets brisk. I'm standing there at night, I'm freezing and I'm looking at my friends and we've been online for 40 minutes and I'm wearing heels and I'm not comfortable and I wanna go home. And she goes, oh, I know we can get in, I know we can get in. And sure enough, one of my friends, Brian saw us, he was on the VIP list, he got us in. That's not the third door, but it's a second door. But I want to tell you about the third door. So the first door is the people who stand in the line and they the line goes around the block and they wait and they wait and they wait and they wait and they wait. And, they wait. and most of those people just don't ever get in. There are people who spend their whole lives in, in, the, in the first door, in that line. They wait in the line. Then there's people in the second door. My friend Brian was one of those people. Brian is a guy who has a private jet. I knew him because he dated a friend of mine. And he was a banker at Wells Fargo and he has like some of the biggest accounts and he has tickets to the Clippers and the Lakers and all the stuff. And he's always on the VIP list. Well, that's not the third door. There are people who are on that second list, the sec this door number two, their last name is Kardashian. They know a person, they were born into a trust fund. They have a certain group of contacts. That's the second door. It's not that exciting. The most exciting door is the third door. And that's what Alex said. Alex said Steven Spielberg, who he interviewed, didn't have the second door. It wasn't available. D Steven Spielberg didn't even get into the film school he wanted to get into. He didn't have the second door. And he wasn't willing to wait in the line. He wasn't willing to wait in line at that first door. So he took the opportunity to go through the third door. And Alex said, if you do look at it like the metaphor of waiting in line at a club, it's insane because while that line wraps around the block and most people just never get in, they just accept that and they just keep doing that. They literally do that in so many areas of their life. And then there's that second line. He goes, if you look at a building, there's always a third way in. There's the kitchen window, there's the back door, there's the side door. Like buildings don't just have one door. And he said, my point is there is always, always, always another way in. There's always, always, always another door. He said, and when it comes down to it, when I talk to Gaga, Maya Angelou, Steven Spielberg, he goes, I realize the hard part was not finding the third door. The hardest part was leaving the line, leaving the line in front of the first door. He said, and that's why I wrote the book because the third door is right there. It's not hard. My friend Sahara was at a conference sitting in the back row and she had written a book on Ayurveda healing and she was 23 years old. 
she found a way, I want you to hear this. She had found a way to heal herself through Ayurveda medicine. When she was in high school, she had a bunch of really serious issues, both mental health issues, as well as physical issues. She wound up having a situation where her hair started falling out, her period stopped. She was in, she was not in good shape. She lost a tremendous amount of weight. And the doctor said, things are really bleak. Try this medicine, try this drug. It didn't work. She wound up going to India and started to take Ayurveda really seriously. She wound up then coming back to the States, a completely changed person. Her menstrual cycle was back. Her hair stopped falling out. She gained back the normal healthy weight. And she called all these publishers and said, I want to write a book on Ayurveda. I want to write a book on Ayurveda. And everyone said, what the hell is your credential? How old are you? Where'd you go to nutrition school? And her answer was zero, zero, zero. I'm this age. I never went to nutrition school, but I have a personal story and can tell it because it's the truth. The answer was no. The answer was no. She was sitting in the back of a room at a conference. And just then Deepak Chopra walks on stage. She's literally in the back row. She said, I don't know what came over me. I stood up and started walking towards the stage. Miss, excuse me, please sit down. He's about to speak. Didn't hear it. Didn't think about it. Kept walking, kept walking, kept walking. That was the third door. She walked onto the stage. He's standing there getting mic'd up. He goes, um, excuse me. And she said, Deepak, I wrote a book on Ayurveda medicine. You're the reason I went to India. Can I send you my book? And he said, next time you ask this question, please don't come up to me on stage before I'm about to speak. And she said, noted. Can I send you my book? He said, sure. Here's my email address. You can send me the PDF. She sent him the PDF. He wrote back and said, I was so shocked that you did that, that I had to read at least the first paragraph. This book is so good. I'm asking you if I can write the forward to your book. Her book became the number one best-selling book on Ayurveda in the history of that topic catapulted her into a multi seven figure business. And then Deepak said, would you come work with me? Finding the third door is not hard. It's obvious every single day. The hard part is having the courage to stand up, get up from your seat. And the woman who's the usher is going, what are you doing? Miss, miss, this woman who worked with the name tag who Sahara will never see again who has no power over her life, but the shame of that woman telling her, miss, miss, sit down, is enough for most people to have not gotten out of the chair. Not that day. When people say to me, I remember you telling the story that you got a record deal, then you got dropped, then you got all those songs and all those commercials. So what's the secret? What's the secret? Is it luck? Is it a secret? I go, um... When you see the opportunity, you take it. And how did I get the record deal? Because I was willing to reach out to Ron Fair at Interscope because I had the guts to say, let's meet. I have something. Because he went, how the hell did you even get my email address? How are you even in here having this conversation with me? If I were to tell you the rooms I have found myself in, the things that I have done, they're in front of us every second, all day long. And the only thing that keeps you from moving into that third door is your shame and guilt of leaving the line. And you know why you don't want to leave the line? Because there's people around you who have indoctrinated you into believing that you belong in that line. And my friend, Jillian Michaels, who helps people lose like serious weight. She told me a story about a guy who was on The Biggest Loser and he was brave and he showed up and he lost so much weight and he started to love himself. And it was the first time that they shot this season where they shot over Christmas break and let the contestants go home. And she said to the producer, I don't think that's a good idea. 
And they said, well, we have to do it because the network called and ordered a second season. It's the only way we can shoot and we can't keep people from going home for Christmas. Let's let them go home. He comes back from Christmas. He had gained almost all the weight back in a week. And she looked at him and said, what the hell happened? We came so far. I watched you. And he said, I went home, opened the door and saw my mother who is so obese. And the look on her face was, you have abandoned me. And he said to Jillian, I cannot leave her behind. And she said, Kathy, the amount of shame people have in rising, that's the problem. She goes, I see people do things. They don't even seem humanly possible. It's not a lack of courage. It's not a lack of being brave. It's the shame that keeps you from thinking you're worthy of having courage. Because so many people will stand in that line and go, look who thinks she's a thing. Look who think he's someone. She's doing this. He's doing this. Don't you go, miss, excuse me, miss, excuse me, know your place, know your place. No, no, you know your place. Because me and Deepak, I've seen that story. I know how this movie ends. We become business partners. So you might need to sit down. Thank you. Thank you. Think about it. Breathe into it. Let it wash over you. Leave the line. And that's what this is about for me. And that's why Angie said it today. She goes, you have to tell them that because that's, do you think I really care about marketing? Do you think I really care? Honestly, you, you spent a little time. I think I really care about people making an arbitrary six figure figure figure. I don't care about it. I care that you literally get to show up and be yourself, that you actually have the abundance that you deserve, that you actually get to change the way your family's generational trauma keeps getting passed down. That's what I care about. And that's what we do and made to do this. And that's why when people are like, it's $300 a month. And I'm like, I can't even believe we're having this conversation, but I can, because I know the way people believe and they've been taught to believe and they've been taught what to think. And I also know what's on the other side. And so I know that some of you are gonna say, I'll do this on my own, I'll find somebody else. If there is somebody else, by the way, cause there's a lot of amazing, amazing teachers out there. I have a lot of friends who are these people. If that person speaks to you in a different, deeper way, go to them, go to the person who, when they speak, you actually hear it and it moves you into action. If it happens to be that I'm that person, then don't do it on your own. Don't you wait another second, leave the line. Let's go. This is not, it's not a formulaic thing. It's a full transformation. So it's now 119. Type a one in the chat if you went and registered in the last four minutes or 12 and a half minutes. Welcome to you guys. Good for you. Good for you. Good for you. That really, before you even take one class of mine in the 12 weeks, you already just had a trans, you just had a transformation because you just made a decision that was a little bit of a scary stretch and said, next, thank you, next, thank you, next, thank you, next. So welcome, 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 welcome. Since I am a long-winded person and I spoke until 119 and I thought I was going to say one and 115 because I'd give you 15 minutes to go sign up. I lied because it's 120. I'm going to now literally get off so that you have 15 minutes to go and sign up for the program. So I've we'll had make people it. people DMing me like, I want to go pay, but I want to listen to Kathy. What a jerk. She doesn't stop talking. And then she's like, and did you do it? Ha ha. First of all, in the third door, do two things at once. No, uh, <laughs> you have until let's make it 145. You have 25 minutes because I actually want to make sure that I actually stopped speaking. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to stop. You're going to go sign up, go to made to do this.com. And if you haven't watched the session from last night, you can go to kathyelliecom slash replay. Um, Angela, is there anything else that you feel like saying? Yes. I just want to tell you guys, this is for you. This is for you. This 
life, the mindset, the getting to wake up every day and being so excited. Guys, I wake up every day to a three-year-old and a seven-year-old pulling on me to a rooster crowing out the window to everybody needing all the things from me. And guess what? I'm like, I get to go work today. I get to go serve people today. I get to be with my family and do this and live a life I absolutely love even when it's five in the morning and I don't feel like getting out of bed. I always feel like getting out of bed. And that's for you. You don't have to be this amazing, big, connected, like I'm the most talented person. And sure, it's natural. No, you are needed. You are necessary. This is for you. Receive it. Receive it for you because you are not an exception to this. You are included. I love it. People are asking if there's going to be homework. I think we will make homework for this session because what we're planning to do is that every single night at eight, I'll be doing more giveaways. And so we will put homework out for this session and that you will have always a day to do it. And I'll do those Mm -hmm. giveaways tomorrow. But if you want to be in on the giveaways from tonight, you go to watch the workshop we did yesterday at kathyheller.com slash replay. And there's a homework that corresponds to it. And I will pick a few of you and give you that, um, those gifts tonight, we will be giving away, um, different fun gifts tonight. It's like a Gorgiana necklace plus scholarships to the program. If you want to enroll and get the lightning launch lab bonus, I'm telling you, we, we always do this. Uh, you will, you will get the scholarship if you've already enrolled. So don't wait so that you miss out on that because you'll get that as well. Even if you get chosen, we'll be able to refund you if you get chosen for a scholarship. We love you very much. This was so fun. It was fun. It was silly. It was a little bit emotional. That's how life should be. Life is emotional. You have emotions, feel them. I love you guys. I love you, Angela. Thank you for being you. See you guys soon. Bye.